Hello. Today we're talking about the card known as the universe, or the world, at long last, the final card of the Major Arcana. The reason for the difference in name, by the way, is uh, mainly just because the understanding of the world uh, as a term has changed, so that the concept of the card is of all and everything. It's vast. And uh, it used to be that the world, you know, the whole wide world, uh, represented that, basically. But nowadays, uh, we think of a, a much bigger universe beyond just the world. So we've gone from calling it the world to calling it the universe because the concept is that it is absolutely everything it encompasses all so the world is the end you could say of the major arcana and um, just like the fool at the beginning of the major arcana is really two cards in one the world is the same thing because the tarot is cyclical so the two worlds the two universes that you can have are the divided universe and the united universe mm -hmm. and in particular in the tarot there actually is this division because if you look at the uh, if you look at the, the minor arcana, then what you have there are the four suits of the four elements uh, and the various iterations of those elements and the court cards, which are the various combinations of those elements. So that in the minor arcana, you have the whole world, as it were, in a divided form, everything separate. In the card, the universe, you have the whole universe united into one single form, into one image, the image of the universe. So the universe is the fulfillment, the connecting of all of the, the minor arcana, and also the completion of the whole journey, the spiritual journey of the major arcana. And this is connected to the, the previous two cards in that each of these cards, the sun, the aeon or judgment, and the world or the universe are representative of a different stage of the process that, that we call enlightenment. The sun is the enlightenment of the, of the individual. It's the uniting of the self a transcending of the self into discovering the self as as united to existence you know, in the earlier cards of the major arcana the initiate goes through this process of discovering the true will or the true self and of connecting to that true will that true self and in therefore going through this process of metamorphosis of the breaking down of all that is separate or, or disharmonious within one, and then of all that is separate between one and existence. And the sun represents the end of that, the culmination, where you achieve individual enlightenment and uh, unite the self to the universe. The aeon, or judgment, is where you express that union to all humanity and it becomes the awakening of all mankind through the form of the word and so this is uniting uh, all of humanity and uniting all of humanity to the universe sorry about that phone call so the the Aeon card is the uniting of all of humanity to the universe. And finally, the, the universe, the world, is the symbol of 
the uniting, the transcending of all of existence with itself. This is the highest stage of enlightenment, what in some traditions is called epissimus, which means the highest. And this is the work of the Buddha, you could say. So taking a look at the card, I'm going to show you first in the deck that we've been using. It might be a little difficult to see there, but you have this image over here of a dancing woman or girl who is surrounded by geometrical figures and then at each of the four corners you have four creatures, four living creatures um, the bull, the lion, the eagle and the man or the angel in this case it's depicted as an angel there the sun and the moon are also visible in this card and in the center you have a, a kind of an encampment, a wheel that consists of a nonagon and a pentagon and then a, and then a a triangle with a circle within the triangle and a point in the center of the circle. So this is a, an emblem, a symbol of the universe. I'm going to show you also in the Toth deck um, a similar but different image. We see here there are still the, the four creatures on the corners, which are the same ones, the bull, the lion, the eagle, and the man. In the center, much much more figurative there is the is is the the girl or the woman who is in a dance the eye of creation is spilling out its force and uh, you see the the white and the black form of the the Tao in in the shape of a of a serpent and she's trotting upon that serpent and behind her it might be hard to to make out there's a a mobius strip and it's surrounded just like in the wheel in the in the encampment in the other card uh, by a structure, a latticework that is giving the effect or the sense of spinning. And uh, the, the main points, symbolic points that are important on this card are first of all that, that the girl is representative of the universe. And I say girl quite consciously here as in not a woman because in, in the hermetic understanding of this card, the image is of that of a, of a girl just on the very cusp of womanhood, a young maiden. Um, and she is dancing with abandon in, a, in this great motion. And the reason for her youth and the reason for the dance is because it represents the universe constantly changing, that Mobius strip. It's a constant state of renewal constant cycling. So uh, this experience of viewing the universe as this great dance, this great play, what in Sanskrit is called Leela, uh, is sometimes described as the trance of beauty. And it's uh, the experience of all of existence as, uh, in a way, as, as the Tao, which can be translated as the, as the path that flows through life and keeps moving constantly. The universe is a constant process of shift and change. And the reason why the universe is depicted as a young maiden is because this, this change, this constant shift, is renewal. So if the world wasn't changing, it couldn't be young, but the world is always young, the universe is always young, because it is in this constant state of renewing itself. Everything that breaks down is replaced by something built up. And there's this sense of, uh, of continual regeneration. This is the metamorphosis, the transformation of the world. The four creatures are traditional emblems that are used in Hermeticism and alchemy. They appear in the in the Bible, um, and they're representative of the four elements, of course, uh, but they're also in, in Western Hermeticism particularly representative of the four powers of the magician. 
uh, which are to know, to will, to dare, and to be silent. But uh, there is a fifth power of the magician that becomes evident only at this stage, only in the, the stage of, of the universe, which is to go, to be able to move, to flow with that universe. And that is the, the greatest power. The power of the master is the power of being able to, to move continually through this process of change and to flow with it in this universal dance. This is the fifth power of the magician or the fifth power of the sphinx. So it's, it's this motion that creates union, the union of opposites that brings everything together. And the card is symbolic of the, the condition of where one returns to the source, the source of creation, that, that eye of power that is emanating out of it, all things come. Mm. And this is also a, a lesson of a kind of return because everything that you've built up is now compressed into this, into this flow. It all comes into there and then from there you can, you can go to any step, to any place. When you're in the center you can move in all directions. And the idea is of returning that from the universe one now can come back into the world in a, in a state of renewed innocence and uh, be exactly as you once were, but completely changed as well. So that this is how the fool becomes the fool again, except that now he's the, the fool as a master instead of the fool as a fool. He's renewed but he's in real in reality no difference than he ever was and every part every component every step that you've been through on this path is there in the universe so that the message of this card is that in the end you come back down the tree of life this symbol of the tree of life which is this ascent upwards from the material world into the into the heavenly realms into the force of pure creation beyond all definition, beyond all concepts. But when you get to a certain point, then you understand that you haven't actually gone anywhere because everything that is, is, is still there. It's always there. So that even the idea of this concept of enlightenment, the distinction between enlightenment and non-enlightenment, uh, after a certain point, you understand that there is no such thing because everything is enlightened. Uh, and everything exists at every non-enlightened level as well. A lot of people who practice a spiritual discipline have a couple of concepts that are, that are kind of off, I would say. One is this idea that spiritual stages are like this step uh, where you only go forward and it, as you go forward you abandon everything else, right? That, that it's, it's not a um, a cumulative but a replacement process where you go from one state to another and it means that you get to let go of all these other things and get past that and now you, you're not those things anymore. Uh, but the, the truth that you discover when you reach the universe is that you are all things and, uh, and therefore you're nothing. So that in all of these things you exist and there is no no leaving behind of one stage or another. It's not that suddenly it's like a, a yes or no equation where you're no longer what you were before and now you're only something else. The other thing that people tend to, to mistake is this idea that when you reach this elevated sphere uh, then that's where you get to remain as an ascended master or something like that. You've gone beyond the beyond and, and uh, you're done, right? But uh, the truth is that the whole lesson of the universe is of return, is, of, is, is that everything old is new again, that you return into the cycle. And so now that you've reached the, the summit, 
as the serpent. You have trod on the serpent and you must go down again as the dove to return to all that you were before and be within all of that. And uh, this path of return is something that I'm, I'm going to talk about uh, in the epilogue to our series. <clears throat>